Good morning, folks. Welcome to a shop update. We've got some new machines and some quality of life improvements over here. So what's been going on? First thing, we figured out a pretty easy hack to improve the way our chips are collected. We stack these bins and we've drilled holes in the top bins uh, that function as drain holes. So a decent portion of the coolant that ends up clinging to your chips does drain into that bottom bucket. Um, you can choose then whether you want to clean that, uh, pour it straight back into your tank or recycle it. But nevertheless, what we wanted to do was try to get chips that stay a bit drier. Uh, that way, when we move them into our Gaylord bins that we use to recycle the chips, uh, they're not filled with a bunch of liquid. Uh, similarly, I've been working on some different designs to improve the chip evacuation uh, on our Haas machines. Uh, we really don't want all these chips building up in the corners. Uh, we don't mind doing a quick uh, hose down at the end of the day, but I want that to be a lot faster. And we started 3D printing to fail fast, fail cheap, and they're actually holding up quite well. Uh, you saw there was one right in the front there on the Y-axis saddle that helps, again, minimize the surface area uh, and creates a steeper uh, it creates a steeper section of geometry. Uh, some chips will still build up. Once you hit it with coolant, it goes away real quick. We also have tried some augers. I'm holding one right now. Uh, this is super fun and it looks cool. Actually not gonna be the right design. Um, you can see we've got two of them in here. Helping to prevent that build up at the very end of your chip augers. The trick is gonna be instead to just print uh, a bridge that goes over it and probably a solid spacer as well. Rather than trying to evacuate the chips, we're just gonna try to stop them from ever getting there. Once we come up with a variety of these uh, shapes and sizes, we'll put them over on the NYC CNC website. Uh, but I really wanted to have most of these able to be made with either super basic sheet metal tools or uh, to be able to 3D print them on an FBM printer because that way anybody can do it for relatively low cost. Uh, we also took some of the 3D printed ones and spray painting them with effectively rhino line, like the truck bed liner, which really seems to help their chemical resistance and abrasion resistance. I'm standing in an empty space, and this is really exciting. Uh, we bought an Okuma Genos M660. So the M560 is a super popular machine. It's kind of their 40 by 20. We wanted to step up the size up. So the M660 is approximately 24 by 56 or 58 inch travel. Uh, and really what we wanted was effectively a bridge mill. Um, we love our VF6s and the Genos uh, is gonna be a similar work uh, footprint to those. But what we wanted was rather than a C-frame machine where you've got a base here, a column here, a head over here coming out of the spindle, what we wanted was a double column bridge mill design. It's a totally different kinematic design, totally different in terms of the thermal ability and really gonna help us up our game on our fixture plates. So, We'll do a whole video on that. It is in Charlotte right now. They're adding the uh, chip conveyor and accessories to it. It should be here next week though. Uh, and the other funny thing is it's our first time, really our first time buying a machine other than a Haas. We had a Robo Drill, we had a Daytron, but this is the first time soup to nuts. A uh, very different experience. We'll share more about that in, in the lessons that we learned. But, but to say the least, we're super excited to get that machine here. I've heard great things about their Kuma and the Genos, and we're actually really excited as well for their OSP control. They have an open architecture API. We think there's maybe some pretty cool ways that we can integrate uh, Lex, our home-built ERP system, into the Genos control. Uh, and speaking of Lex, um, this is a approximately $20, $25 Pebble B Finder 2.0 Bluetooth Finder. So it's really no different than an Apple AirTag or any of the other tiles or Bluetooth finders. The thought is these are relatively inexpensive. They're turnkey and some of them may have APIs where they integrate with like Alexa or uh, Siri type thing. Can we use those to help us organize and find stuff? So for example, a lot of our larger raw material, uh, we kind of know where we put it and we use barcodes on a piece of wood to be able to see what's what. And we don't really have a problem with that. But some of the smaller stuff or some of the stuff that's up on higher racks uh, or stuff that we don't use as often, we can spend some time looking for it. And when I think about quality of life uh, things, the way to improve what we do to waste less time and also just to use technology to our advantage, we think we can integrate these with Lex. So when you're looking for uh, Nomad material, you can 
potentially either ask Alexa, uh, which would be kind of cool, but really uh, all we need to do is have Lex, which is the brains of our operations now, hit find material. And the reason we picked that Pebble B Finder 2.0 is it was the only off the shelf Bluetooth finder that we could find that uh, both makes sound, but also it blinks an LED. I didn't want to rely just on sound like the AirTags do in a machine shop where there's some background noise or you've got a lot of uh, those Bluetooth finders potentially throughout the shop. Sound alone is not a good solution. The light though is key. Uh, we've been testing it and they seem to work pretty well. The other thing we could do with it is turn some of our dumb toolboxes into smart toolboxes. So it's really simple to create an Airtable database or some other online sort of database of what's what. So let's say you're storing metrology tools or your files and rasps or de deburring tools. Well, as you start to grow with employees and people, sometimes it's really hard to train folks and say, hey, this is where that is. Um, and I'm not sure we would add Pebble Beast to every single toolbox drawer, but one of the things you could do is start linking it to common items uh, or toolboxes. And that way, when someone's looking for something, they could just go up to a computer and say, oh, there's where the um, files are, hit the find button in the toolbox drawer will blink. This is 25 bucks, which is not free, but it's way cheaper than the thousands or tens of thousands of dollars uh, that you would pay for a proper uh, digitized toolbox that has blinking drawers and intelligence locking and integration with software and so forth. It's just clean and it's simple to tweak. So we'll keep you posted on how that goes. Sharpie capped on tape. You've seen this, use this stuff in the super glue videos. It's also known as powder coat tape. It's basically a high temperature transparent tape. The reason that's worth mentioning is awesome quality of life hack. Look at our Haas, beautiful Haas screen. You can write on it. Sharpies don't do anything. It's just glass. It'll just wipe right off. You can also use dry erase. It's a little easier to erase. We put these on little lanyards on the machines. It works great if you've got that critical reminder you want to remind yourself of. Write it right on the screen. The capped on tape is you want to write a Sharpie on a vise or on a part or your table. It always washes off. It just won't stay because coolant and chips and so forth. Write your note with a Sharpie and then cover it with capped on tape. Sorry, it's really dark right here. The capped on tape is a really cheap and quick way to protect your Sharpie. It won't wash away. The coolant doesn't really get underneath this. And then when you're done, you can rip this off and erase it as needed. We're right at the point of needing a second uh, or bigger air compressor. And we love this Atlas Copco. It's a seven and a half horsepower. It's honestly been bulletproof for about six years. It has 3,800 hours on it. Um, I have no complaints, but uh, we have a friend that has a similar compressor. His just kind of blew up on him. And if we don't have an air compressor, we're down. The value is going to be having a second redundant compressor. So I think we're going to buy uh, one called a FIAC, F-I-A-C. Um, I'm actually probably going to place the order today for it. Very similar size. It has a digital control. So it'll allow us to adjust the start-stop pressure. And that's going to let us set it up to do a lead lag. So that compressor comes on at 100 it turns off at 140. Our new one will turn on at 105 and off at 140. So normally the new one will do most of the work, but if we use a bunch of air, the second one will kick in. And then every so often we'll switch uh, the PSI ranges so that the old one also spends time being kind of the primary. Uh, the other thing I really like about this FIAC is that it is uh, always running, whereas this one, when it stops, it has to do an unload because it can't start under load. And I think that's part of something that can wear things out over time. Uh, but also just having the redundancy is going to be great. The other thing I add, if you're watching this video and you're thinking about starting a shop, is uh, run bigger airlines. We ran the, I believe, one inch uh, flex pipe or rapid pipe throughout the shop. And it would not have been that much more expensive to have a larger diameter. And we have seen some issues where when you are using a bunch of air, we just don't have enough flow or volume uh, to get it where we need to. So the relatively small incremental cost of a larger diameter pipe would have been worth it. Plus, your pipe effectively works uh, as a battery. It stores air, and uh, I wish I had done that. If you had a minor flood, and one of the things I absolutely insist if you're running a shop with any sort of a coolant tank or water system is buy these inexpensive $20 or so flood sensors. They just take a 9-volt battery. Uh, they're, they're dumb. They have no intelligence to them other than if this 
gets shorted out with liquid, it will beep quite loudly. Uh, we have them near most of our coolant tanks, and we actually even put one in near the bathroom. Again, if we're here, uh, it's going to immediately beep, and it's going to tell us something's going on. It has saved our butt uh, already once. We also found um, something kind of cool. It's this rubber chip brush. These work great for washing out machines where you don't want the chips to cling uh, like they will to a normal foxtail or bristle style brush. Relatively inexpensive. Um, and we just mount them on the side of the cart with the little handle grabs. And finally, we're using these red shipping carts to move stuff over to the shipping carriers. And what we did is I want these to kind of look nice. I want them to go into the same position every time. I honestly didn't think this would last. We just 3D printed some wheel chocks. I'll throw the model up, uh, link in the description, uh, and just use some 3M uh, UH, Ultra High Bond, UHBs, that's not right, uh, tape to stick them to our epoxy floor. And what this means is you can pretty quickly roll that cart right back into its spot. And last but not least, take a look at that. Johnny Five is almost alive. He's been coming along really, really well. We've had an intern, Samuel. We found him through our local high school VEX robotics team. He has really taken over the lead on this project. And we had so many parts that were done but needed assembled. We needed some more parts made. We've machined some, fabricated some, printed some. You guys have been awesome. The number of crowdsourced parts on this thing is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we've got more parts here, uh, but really the main section left will be his head and some of the intricacies of that our goal is we want to get that part of it done and then we're going to come back through and start looking at which parts we're going to then uh, either add or improve the electromechanical element of it uh, the track drives already work uh, we'll want to get the shoulder joints working the uh, linear motors that actuate his torso and so forth but really really cool and you start to get a sense of just how big j5 really is so with that folks hope you enjoy it hope you learned something take care See you soon.